Hey there YouTube. So in this video I wanted to go over how to report on your federal tax return the deferred gain when you roll a, an investment into a qualified opportunity fund. Um, I'm not going to go into detail in this video what those QOFs are, what qualifies, how you invest in them. I'll put a link below to a video where I cover that in more depth. This is just going to be a video about the reporting, right? So after everything's said and done, how do you communicate to the IRS that you get a deferral because you invested in one of these entities? So there's a couple of forms that uh, we're going to need to cover. Schedule D obviously is a big one. The form 8949 and then the actual QOF um, investment form, the form 8997. So if we start with, um, let's start with the 8949 itself. So in this example, John uh, is the taxpayer here, single taxpayer. What he did during the years, he sold Apple stock uh, for a $500,000 gain. And when he sold the stock, he decided he wanted to invest in a QOF to defer the long-term capital gain. So that's the fact pattern here. So how does he report this to the IRS? Well, the first thing he does is he should record the sale of the property on the Form 8949. Right, so we have listed here the sale of the Apple stock, the date he acquired it, June 30, 2012, the date he sold it, March 1st, 2020, and then the proceeds and the cost basis. So he puts this on line item one, and there's his gain. Now, in order to effectively wipe out this gain when it foots at the bottom here, he needs to add a separate line item for the investment in the QOF. Okay, and so per the instructions, this is the format you need to enter, right? So you put the EIN of the fund that you invested in, the date that you contributed the cash, right? So 4-1, so he's within that time frame where he's allowed to roll the proceeds into the investment, right? Because he did it within a month after the sale, uh, which is good. And so you leave these other items here blank, C, D, and E are all left blank. Enter code Z as the adjustment, and the amount of the adjustment here is the amount of cash proceeds from the gain that you rolled into the QOF fund. So when John sold his stock, he took $500,000 worth of cash, which was his gain, and he invested that into the LLC, the QOF LLC structure. So the negative adjustment here creates a negative amount as the loss and the two offset. Now. For this example, we're keeping it very simple where this is the only stuff he sold. Obviously, if he sold other stocks or bonds, you can list them all down here as well. But it's these two items up here that you need to have in order to communicate to the IRS that you sold the stock and you rolled the gain into a qualified opportunity fund. Okay, so after this is all reported on the 8949, um, and again, this is a long-term gain for him. If, if it was a short-term capital gain, it would be on the other form 8949 for um, uh, the short-term uh, proceeds. So the next item to complete is the form 8997, right? So this is where you list the amount of deferral for the current year investments, and then you also have running totals for the amount of prior year investments that you're that you uh, defer gain on and that you haven't yet sold right so for john this is his first investment um so he completes part two here right so this is where more information on the on the fund goes so the ein of the fund obviously that should match you know what was on the 8949 the date of the investment and a description of the property so in this case what he invested in the name of the fund obviously this is not a real fund i, I just put a fake name in there but qof fund six llc and so what john did was he invested five hundred thousand dollars and in exchange he got a five percent interest in the llc uh, the amount of long-term gain deferred again is the five hundred thousand dollars if it was a short-term deferral it would be in box d now the the next piece that john needs to complete here for the first year is list the total uh, holdings at the end of the year, right? So because this is his first investment, he just repeats the information down here. If, for example, he had prior year QOF investments, he would also list those here, right? So he would list um, the same information, the date it was acquired, which would be in prior years, and the amount of total gain that was deferred. So those are the two items uh, John will complete on the 8997. 
and once the 89 uh, uh, 49 is completed all that information should flow up to schedule D now he didn't dispose of any QOFs during the year so he would indicate no um, if he did sell them then you would have to indicate yes of course and then complete the appropriate fields on the QOF form and the 8949 so in this case he just completes part two and you can see here that um, we're reporting the sales proceeds and the cost basis for the Apple stock, but because of the adjustment for the rollover, um, the amount of gain or loss that's actually recorded on the return this year is going to be zero. So that covers the reporting. Uh, it's relatively simple. It's just you got to make sure that you follow all the all the steps to make sure that the IRS is happy with how you report it. Because again, just qualifying for the investment contributing it within the appropriate amount of time you know the irs is picky that's not enough you have to appropriately report everything on your tax return or else they're they're not going to be happy with you so um i hope that was helpful if you have any questions please leave me a comment below uh happy to answer those and then of, of course always appreciate a like on the video and if you're not subscribed to the channel please do um and i hope to see you again soon thank you so much